Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This is the House of Law and I am Attorney Al Jumrani. This is episode 2 of Civil Law Jurisprudence by Justice Leonin. If you missed the first episode, you can watch it through the link above or the link in the description box below. In this episode, I will talk about three more Supreme Court decisions penned by Justice Marvick Leonin. The first case is about extended lease by tolerance. The second case is about recovery of a land which was fraudulently registered and later sold to a third person. The third case is about change of name and sex in the birth certificate. Hmm. Interesting. Let's begin. Our first case is Intramuros Administration versus Offshore Construction Development Company, GR number 196795, March 7, 2018. In this case, Offshore Construction Development Company leased certain areas of the Baluarte de San Andres and Baluarte de San Francisco de Dilao located inside Intramuros, Manila. The lease was from July 1999 to August 2004 renewable for another five years upon the party's mutual consent. Sadly, however, offshore construction had incurred arrears amounting to over 6 million pesos. To settle its arrears, offshore construction offered to pay the Department of Tourism's monthly operational expenses for lights and sound equipment, electricity, and performers at the Baluarte Plano Luneta de Santa Isabel Intramuros for a period of one year from August 2004 to August 2005. The Department of Tourism accepted the offer and a memorandum of agreement was signed between Offshore Construction, Department of Tourism, and the Intramuros Administration. When the memorandum of agreement was not followed and the arrears had reached over 13 million pesos, that's the time that the Intramuros Administration filed an ejectment case against Offshore Construction. However, the ejectment case was dismissed by the Metropolitan Trial Court on the ground of forum shopping and lack of jurisdiction. It turned out that other cases were pending between the parties in other courts for different issues. Indeed, there are many issues in this case, mostly procedural. But the issue relevant to us is offshore construction's claim that it cannot be ejected because Intramuros administration tolerated offshore construction's possession even after the expiration of the lease and that it was supposedly the party's agreement for offshore construction to operate the leased premises to recover its investments and to make profits. So to this, the Supreme Court ruled that the contract between the parties was a contract of lease and not a concession agreement. The lease contracts expired in August 2004 and there was no proof that there was any contract mutually agreed upon by the parties for any extension of the lease. Furthermore, petitioners' tolerance of respondents' occupation and use of the lease premises after the end of the lease contracts does not give the latter a permanent and indefeasible right of possession in its favor. When a demand to vacate has been made as what petitioner had done, respondents' possession became illegal and it should have left the lease premises. So alam nyo na, pag natapos na ang lease contract at pinayagan lang ang tenant, na manatili ng walang bagong kontrata, tolerance ang tawag doon at pwedeng paalisin anytime at dapat umalis na ang tenant pag pinaalis na ng landlord. The second case is Spouses Roberto and Maria Cristina Aboitiz and Spouses Peter and Victoria Poe, GR number 205450, June 5, 2017. In this case, two parcels of land in Kabangkalan, Mandawi City, identified as Lot 2807 and Lot 2835, were previously owned by one Mariano Seno. In 1973, Mariano sold the properties to his son, Siriaco. Then in 1978, Siriaco sold the properties to Victoria Poe by way of a deed of absolute sale. In 1982, Mariano died and was survived by his children. In 1990, Mariano's children sold Lot 2835, one of the properties previously sold by Siriaco to Victoria Poe, this time to Roberto Aboitis, also by way of a deed of absolute sale. Immediately, Roberto developed Lot 2835 as part of a subdivision called North Town Homes. 
1993, Roberto was able to obtain an original certificate of title over Lot 2835. Meanwhile, the spouses Po were only able to declare the same property in their name but only for taxation purposes. It bears noting that because the property was converted into a subdivision, Roberto sold portions of it to certain individuals. Now, claiming that the second sale of Lot 2835 to Roberto, the issuance of the title in the name of Roberto, and the sale of portions thereof to certain individuals were all void, the spouses Po filed in 1996 an action to recover the land to declare the nullity of title with damages. Roberto, however, opposed the action, claiming that he has a better right to the property because he is the registered owner. Also, Roberto claimed that the action had prescribed or that the spouses po were guilty of latches because it took them more than 18 years since they bought the property from Siriaco to assert their right to the property. Lastly, Roberto claimed that the portion sold to certain individuals cannot be annulled because these were buyers who are deemed innocent purchasers for value. So, there are three important issues in this case. First, who between the spouses Po and Roberto has a better right to lot 2835? Second, has the action prescribed? And third, may the sale to the subdivision lot buyers be annulled? On the first issue, the Supreme Court held that the spouses Po have a better right. The property was first sold by the original owner, Mariano Seno, to Siriaco, then Siriaco sold it to Victoria Poe. Thus, the property was no longer part of Mariano's estate when he died and which the children inherited. The children did not have any title or right to sell the property to Roberto. That Roberto was able to register his sale does not give him a superior right. Here, the Supreme Court reiterated the rule that Ownership is different from a certificate of title. The fact that petitioner was able to secure a title in his name did not operate to vest ownership upon him of the subject land. Registration of a piece of land under the Torrent system does not create or vest title because it is not a mode of acquiring ownership. A certificate of title is merely an evidence of ownership or title over the particular property described therein. It cannot be used to protect a usurper from the true owner, nor can it be used as a shield for the commission of fraud. Neither does it permit one to enrich himself at the expense of others. So, on the second issue, the Supreme Court held that since the sale by Mariano's children to Roberto was void, Roberto acted as a trustee for the true owners, the spouse's po, under an implied constructive trust. A constructive trust is created by force of law such as when a title is registered in favor of a person other than the true owner. Accordingly, an action for reconveyance based on an implied or constructive trust prescribes in 10 years from the alleged fraudulent registration or date of issuance of the certificate of title over the property. In this case, Roberto's title was issued in 1993. The action for a conveyance was filed in 1996, hence it has not yet prescribed. Now on the last issue, the Supreme Court held that the spouses Po cannot recover the property from the subdivision lot buyers. They were innocent purchasers for value who are required only to rely on the title of the buyer, in this case Roberto's title. They are not obliged to look beyond the certificate of title. The rationale for this rule is the public's interest in sustaining the indefeasibility of a certificate of title as evidence of the lawful ownership of the land or of any encumbrance on it. Thus, in effect, while the spouses Po were allowed to recover the entire lot 2835, they will have to respect the portions sold to the subdivision lot buyers. These, after all, were already subdivided and partitioned from the original land. Our third and final case for this episode is Republic v. Michelle Soriano Gallio, GR No. 207074, January 17, 2018. In this case, Michelle Soriano Gallio, who was registered in the birth certificate as Michael and as male, filed in May 2010 a petition for correction of entry of her certificate of live birth under Rule 108 of the Rules of Court for the correction of her name from Michael to Michelle and of her biological sex from male to female. 
during the trial, she presented her college diploma, voter certification, and transcripts indicating that her name was Michelle Soriano Gallo. The doctor who examined her also certified that she was female. On cross-examination, Michelle explained that she never undertook any gender reassignment surgery and that she did not file the petition to evade any civil or criminal liability but simply to obtain a passport. The regional trial court granted the petition but as expected, the office of the Solicitor General filed an appeal. Bakit kasi di na lang kayo maging happy para sa iba? Panira talaga kayo ng trip, ano? Joke lang. I love the OSG. Hi to all my friends at the OSG. In fairness to the OSG, the ground of the appeal is allegedly the wrong remedy. Dapat daw change of name under Rule 103 of the Rules of Court at hindi correction of entry under Rule 108 of the Rules of Court. Ang Rule 108 daw ay para sa mga clerical, harmless, and innocuous errors. Accordingly, change from Michael to Michelle is a substantial change na dapat ay under Rule 103 of the Rules of Court. Isa pa, sabi ng OSG, dapat sa local civil registrar pumunta si Michelle at hindi diretso sa court ayon sa Republic Act 9048. So, what did the Supreme Court say? Well, first, on the procedural issue, the Supreme Court recognized that under Articles 376 and 412 of the Civil Code, there is a need for judicial authority before any person can change his or her name or before any entry in the civil registry may be changed or corrected. The counterpart remedy for Article 376 of the Civil Code is Rule 103 of the Rules of Court and for Article 412 of the Civil Code, it's Rule 108 of the Rules of Court. However, these provisions were amended by Republic Act 9048, which put these errors and changes under the jurisdiction of the Civil Registrar. Furthermore, Republic Act 10172, approved in 2012, had also transferred changes in the sex of a person from the court to the local Civil Registrar. Note, however, that the year was 2012. Hence, according to the Supreme Court, the law mandating administrative change of name and sex does not apply in Michelle's case because her petition was filed in 2010, two years before Republic Act 10172 was passed. Now to the second issue, is the change from Michael to Michelle a substantial error or a clerical error? Drum roll, please. Ta -da 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 -da. Well, the Supreme Court held that it is a mere clerical error that can be corrected under Rule 108 and not a substantial error that needs to be changed under Rule 103. Said the Supreme Court, Gallio is not attempting to replace her current appellation. She is merely correcting the misspelling of her given name. Michelle could easily be misspelled as Michael, especially since the first four letters of these two names are exactly the same. The differences only pertain to an additional letter A in Michael and LE at the end of Michelle. Michelle and Michael may also be vocalized similarly considering the possibility of different accents or intonations of different people. In any case, Gallio does not seek to be known by a different appellation. The lower courts have determined that she has been known as Michelle all throughout her life. She is merely seeking to correct her records to conform to her true given name. Apparently, there is no issue on the matter of the change of sex. Babae naman talaga si Michael, este, Michelle, or Michael. Alright guys, that's it for episode 2 of Civil Law Jurisprudence by Justice Leon and I hope may natutunan kayo today. For the bar reviewees, take note of these cases. They might come out in the bar exams this November. Please drop a like if you like this video. Please subscribe to support me and click that notification bell to be alerted when I upload a new video. Till the next video, wherein I will discuss three more cases. Laging tatandaan, isip ay buksan, alamin ang batas. Bye guys!